So in this video, I'm going to explain a method for determining liquid compositions that is described in a paper by Scruggs and Paterka, 2018, an American mineralogist. So this is one of the most common questions that I get. How do we know, if we have a pyroxene composition, what we should choose for a liquid? Well, you could start with a glass or a whole rock. Uh, but let's say you have something like the Chaos Crag. So here's the CPX PT2020 sheet. This is where we left off in another video where we imported a bunch of data from Dome A from the Chaos Crags at the Lassen Volcanic Center. We can actually get rid of all this experimental data because we don't really need it. So I'll just hit delete and that still preserves all the equations. Yeah, I always check to see that I don't get numer num errors, uh, the num uh, numerical value errors that Excel sometimes inserts here. So let's go to the Chaos Crags. So for this data here, when we plot up all the whole rock compositions, we get Harker diagrams that look something like this, where we get very nice linear trends. And that's very common in a lot of systems. Now, it doesn't have to be a linear trend. It'd be a curved linear trend that you could fit with, let's say, a fractional crystallization model. But this is a very common case where we have mixing. And then I've got another tab here where I've calculated a mixing model. And for that mixing model, I've taken one of the mafic values here, uh, and then I've taken an average of these two felsic values here, and those seem to work very well as n numbers. Then I let f go from not just 0 to 1, but from minus 0.1 to 1.1, so we can mathematically extend that curve outside that range. Now, we don't need to use that curve per se, but mathematically it will be the same to do so, uh, given the method I'm going to show here. So I'm going to take these two compositions, this is uh, the mafic n member, and I'll call it m dash e, and this will be the felsic n member, we'll call it f dash e, and I'll just grab those compositions and copy them, and then bring them into the client pyroxene 2020 sheet. And I'll just put them up here somewhere, and I want to paste them so that everything lines up, so that this silica lines up with this silica. Aluminum with aluminum, titanium with titanium, all the way out to phosphorus. And they do line up so it looks like we're good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enter uh, a new row. And this row will be a value for F. And what I'm going to do is take each composition and I'm going to let it Instead of being the whole rock composition here, this is just a number, a set of values that we've entered. Instead of having those values, it's going to be, in a sense, the mixing model. I'll let F be 0, and I'm just going to enter here a mixing equation for these two compositions. So instead of 53.74, I'm going to enter equals uh, F times the mafic component plus, uh, we'll take parentheses 1 minus F, and then multiply that by the felsic component, and we'll hit return. Well, I want to fill down and fill across, so in filling across, I don't want to change the E values, so I'll put a dollar sign in front of the E's, and then I don't want rows 3 or 4 to change, so I'll fix rows 3 and 4, so that way I'm always referring to the mafic and felsic components, and I'll just have F be 0 all the way down. So I'll just fill down and then fill right. And I don't have a water content. We just leave it at, let's say, 2% for chaos crags uh, just to pick a value. So here it's exactly as we would expect. I have zero amounts of the mafic, and that would mean 100% then of the felsic end number. Now I can look at this diopside uh, Hedenbergite error. It is equal to the difference between the calculated, uh, the observed value over here, and the calculated or predicted value here. How different are these? And so we can hit return and look at that value. And then I'm going to insert another column here. I also want to track the iron magnesium exchange coefficient. And that's way over here. Why did I put it over there? Because I really wasn't thinking ahead. So I'll just make a copy of this and put that over here. So I can track these two tests of equilibrium. So if we come over to the plots, uh, the test for equilibrium here compares uh, diopside Hedenbergite predicted versus observed. 
Uh, they used to be pretty good, and now I've pulled them off because I've changed all the whole rock compositions. And then here's the Rhodes diagram. Those are pretty darn close, probably good enough for what we need. But I'd like to fix that diopside. Hindenburgite error so could be a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is use Goal Seek. I'm going to say Tools Goal Seek, and I'm going to set cell diopside Hedenbergite, it's already selected, so F15. I want it to be zero. I want there to be no difference between the predicted and measured or observed values. And I'm going to try to get that to go to zero by changing the mixture, the amount of the mafic and felsic end member. I've set it to zero here. Let's see if it converges. It might, it might not. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and if it doesn't, well, we didn't really get a good value. That's okay, because this happens a lot. I'm going to cancel. So what I'll do is just enter a value and see if it decreases from 0.12. So let's say we make it uh, 1. If we use the uh, MAFIC head member, we get down to 0.02. It didn't converge because it didn't want to go past the value of 1. What if we put 1.1? We go past the... Um, uh, let's say 1.15, uh, which it's rounded off to 2. Let's see if we can... No, it's not. It's, it's going to round it off to 2. So I've entered 1.15 there. Notice that I've gotten the diopside Hedenberg value to go to 0. And the iron magnesium exchange coefficient is 0.29. Well, the ideal is 0.27. That's the target or so, we think. But we don't know that number precisely. The error on the experimental data is at least plus or minus 0.03. So... Uh, 0.27, there's our new value there. It's in between those dashed lines. That's pretty darn good. I'm going to accept this as the equilibrium liquid composition for this pyroxene here. Notice we're not doing anything with pyroxenes. The pyroxenes are fixed. We just want to know what kind of liquids did they equilibrate. And when we say that the F is 1.2, we're taking more of the mafic end member than is even here. Notice that this has a higher MGO if we come back to the Chaos Crags data and we look at this mixing line in the silicon versus aluminum, that means we need something that's out here on this extension of the line. Maybe it would be more helpful to look at the aluminum content. We'll look at something that the equilibrium liquid had a higher aluminum content and a higher magnesium. And, and that's okay. If all of these things, all these whole rocks are produced by magma mixing, then it could be that the real liquid is out here somewhere and that these are the liquids here that produce the clinopyroxenes and then it's only after mixing that we got this array of whole rock compositions. So we're searching along this trend. That's effectively what we're doing. We're searching for liquids anywhere along this trend that will explain our pyroxene compositions. Now it need not be linear. This could curve upwards and you could force it to curve by doing a couple of things. You could write a formula for fractional crystallization or all of an addition. There are a number of ways to do it. But we're just going to go back and use this linear trend. I'm going to go back and again try to set this to zero just to see if goal seek will work. I want that to be zero. Uh, I'm going to do it by changing the fraction of the mafic component. That's not going to converge. I can already tell, so I'm going to hit cancel. And so I'll hit 1. It'll reduce it to 1. Point, make it 1.1. By hand, I can get it out to 0. So again, I've got a value. Uh, not quite as high as this one. So what this is saying is that this liquid here, or rather this pyroxene composition here, equilibrated with a liquid that might be a little bit more mafic than the first one up here, right? We get a little bit, oh no, a little bit, little bit less mafic, uh, 5.29 MGO instead of 5.475. That makes sense. Sorry about that. That's a 1.1 instead of a 1.2. The higher this number, the more the mafic component. We could play this game again. I'm going to guess that 1.1 might explain a lot of these. We'll just fill 1.1 down for all of these. Well, you know what? Look at that. They all come pretty darn close. So a lot of these crystals might have crystallized from liquids that are pretty similar to one another, but that have more magnesium, and in particular, the way I've plotted in the other chart, more magnesium than what is observed in the whole rock. So if we come back here, notice the, the aluminum content is about 8.4 to 8.6. Uh, we can be a little more precise in fixing all of these to zero, but they come pretty close to zero. 
uh, then we can come back to this and say, oh, the equilibrium liquids are really right around this value right there, very close to that orange dot, in fact, that's about 19.44, really almost by accident there. I didn't necessarily intend or plan for that to happen. So let's come back to the clinopyroxene plot. Anywhere where the diopside heat and progrite error is close to zero, and these values are close to 2.27, uh, those are probably going to be pretty good. Take a look at these down here, though. This fellow is at 0.38, so we got this to match, uh, but we're now kind of far away from the 0.27. Let's look at the Rhodes diagram. So that's probably uh, one of these fellows down here that's plot plotting well outside that one sigma range. Uh, we could say that we simply don't have iron magnesium exchange equilibrium. We can look for liquids that instead set that to 0.27. What would happen if we do that? Tools goal seek. I'm going to set this to zero, but instead of choosing the amount of mafic material, I'm going to instead, um, well, let's try that. We'll try setting the mafic material because I've already set it up that way. It's not going to converge, that's okay. So let's try setting this to 0.27. Tools goal seek. Uh, we're going to set that to 0.27, and we're going to do it by changing the amount of felsic material. And we do get a convergence there. And look at that. By letting it converge to 0.27, we get a pretty good value for the diopside heat and brigade exchange. We're within 0.01. That's well within experimental error. So that's a different way of thinking about these. Instead of forcing the diopside heat and brigade error to be zero and hoping for a good value of the iron magnesium exchange, instead we can come to, let's say, this guy here where the iron magnesium exchange is pretty far off. Tools goal seek. Uh, we'll let that be value, a value of 0.27 by changing the amount of mafic material, and it does converge very nicely. So we could play these games, and you could see that these guys here, the this pyroxene right there, we'll put it in red, and then this guy over here, and we'll also put that in red. Those two particular clinopyroxenes seem to have precipitated from a very different kind of liquid, one that has a much higher silica content and a much lower magnesium content. Uh, we plotted the aluminum in the other chart, so something with about 15.4 on average. So if we look over here, yeah, something with 15.4 would be down here. So we have a lot of pyroxenes that are probably coming from the mafic components, there might be a couple of pyroxenes that are precipitating from the felsic lavas. I think if we went through all of these, we'd find that only a couple of them, maybe only these two, would actually work well for this kind of uh, felsic liquid precipitation. But this is kind of the game we play, and there's no definite answer. You have to use your intuition about the system. If the pyroxenes were picked up from some entirely different system altogether and didn't precipitate from the whole rocks in which they're found, then you'd want to look at a different set of whole rocks. If you have a set of gobros, that could be a really tough nut to crack. You'd want to try to look at, uh, again, the whole rock compositions, but keeping in mind that when you do look at the whole rock compositions, these might be trending out not towards liquids, uh, but instead maybe approaching towards a, a set of mineral compositions. They might be trending towards olivine or a clinopyroxene plus plagioclase cumulate, depending on what kind of gobro you have. So the mixing lines could deceive you, especially with the gobroic component. And so you would have to play some games with that diagram there. But anyway, that's the gist of looking for tests of equilibrium, using these tests to get these fellows to plot as closely as possible. I never fixed this. This was supposed to be, uh, oh, what do we want now? We've deleted some rows. We want uh, 16 through 34. And so we'll change this to 15 to a 16, and then over here, 15 to a 34. And then we'll change this again, 16 to 34. And I'm doing this because these are probably the two most useful tests. The amount of cat's component and jadeite are small, so they're always plotting down here in the corner. And then uh, the diopside, hedenbergite, and insotype ferrocillite, those can be pushed around quite a bit. So I think those are a little more robust test. If you get cases where these are plotting pretty close to the one-to-one -one line, then you're probably doing pretty well, especially from the Rhodes diagram, things are plotting pretty close to the equilibrium value here, shown in orange. And when things are plotting well off these lines, 
that's when you'd want to play these games and try to figure out how to find a liquid that will get these tests of equilibrium to at least be internally consistent. And when they are, then you will have pressure and temperature estimates that are hopefully pretty good. As a final note, what is a good pressure and temperature estimate? We have a negative value here, negative minus zero, uh, 0 0.5. It, it's impossible for pressure to be negative. Uh, must we throw these away? If the negative values are small, it's probably okay. Uh, this might make uh, for a better topic on a different YouTube, but in general, since the, the pressure uh, error on the kilobar scale is about plus or minus uh, one and a half to two kilobars at best, anything out to about minus two kilobars would be effectively the same within error of one atmosphere, and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you had very low pressures here, it would indicate a one atmosphere pressure, Although here, uh, since we have a, uh, an ARC system, the neven Paterka 2017 models are probably better, and so uh, all those are nicely positive. We're doing okay there. It's not a guarantee that we have the right pressure and temperatures, uh, but here's the corrected values compared to the ones that we had before we made those corrections. You see there was a big jump in temperature there and also a shift downward to higher pressures. Uh, it's not 100% guarantee that these are all valid, but at least means that you are consistent, internally consistent with experimental data. And that's really the best we can do, to try to be consistent with systems that we are, where we know the conditions of equilibrium.